This is the History Revision Podcast on the Falklands Dispute. What are the Falklands? They're two small and lots of even smaller islands in the South Atlantic, 300 miles off the coast of Argentina. The Falklands War, though, also included nearby South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands. They used to be a strategically important outpost for a naval empire, and now they're just a small community of British farmers run by a private company. The only link was an Argentinian airline after 1971, as and that was where they got the energy supplies from. Why was there a war over them then? Well, the Argentines wanted them, and claimed them as their own, calling them Las Malvinas, since Argentinian independence in way back in 1817. The British had owned them legally since 1833, and the Foreign Office were willing to negotiate with Argentina. Nicholas Ridley proposed a leaseback scheme, allowing Argentina to get sovereignty, with them being leased back to the UK. But the Falklanders themselves wanted to remain British, and Thatcher kept re-emphasising this. They can be seen as just a, an embarrassing colonial legacy. And in 1981, the Foreign Secretary, Lord Carrington, approved, reluctantly though, the withdrawal of HMS Endurance for budget cuts from the area, giving the Argentinian junta, led by Galtieri, a hint over our future policy regarding Le Las Malvinas. So what happened to start the war? Well, the fascist General Galtieri sought popularity in a time of depression for him. His regime had only been in existence for four months, and he sent an invasion force to South Georgia and then the Falklands. It was on the anniversary of 150 years since the British had owned them, and the UK government had been incompetent and negligent before the war. The intelligence available about Argentinian tensions had been ignored, and this forced Carrington's resignation, although he was against HMS Endurance leaving, but it helped party unity, him leaving. What did Thatcher do? She faced a dilemma. A reinvasion would be dangerous and difficult, and leaving it would be abandoning British citizens. Thatcher was decisive. She ordered a task force immediately, although it would take a while to organise and get there, and it was a risky gamble, like Suez. Or was it a brave, ballsy, decisive move? Maybe it was both. She believed, though, it was a matter for Britain to resolve on itself, and she had to explain, though, the incompetence of the government in Parliament. They were outraged. The Commonwealth and EEC members, or EC members, were generally supportive of what we were doing, and it was a popular move in the country. The Empire Strikes Back. Meanwhile, there was a negotiation attempt to get Argentina to adopt UN Resolution 502, says Selden and Collins, and for them to withdraw troops, but this failed. There was an attempt to get the support of the USA, as we needed their bases and intelligence. The Americans said yes, and Thatcher and Reagan's relationship become a little bit more specular. Well, it wasn't in his interest anyway to see the anti-NATO CND Labour in power, so he was going to help Thatcher. The military junta in Argentina was important to the Americans as well, for their anti-communism, but the UK were even more important to Reagan and the Americans. Britain put a 200 mile exclusion zone around the islands, and on May the 2nd, the war really starts when a British submarine sank the General Belgrano. At the time it was claimed that it was preparing to fire on British ships, but actually it was going away from the exclusion zone, and possibly even outside the exclusion zone. Tom Daliel, the uh, MP, says that it was done, the Belgrano was sunk, just to force a war. Thatcher actually took the decision personally herself to torpedo it, as she said, even though it's going away, ships can always turn around. On the 19th of March, South Georgia was taken by Argentina. On the 2nd of April, the Falklands were then taken. On the April 25th, South Georgia was taken back. On the 4th of May, the HMS Sheffield was sank by an Exocet missile two days after the sinking of the Belgrano. And the BBC were criticised for showing the injuries on HMS Sheffield. Negotiation continued after the 4th of May, and on the 21st of May, British troops landed. By the 14th of June, the Argentinians on Falklands had surrendered, and there had never been any formal declaration of war. It left 255 British soldiers dead, and 665 Argentinian ones. What did it mean? 
Well, it boosted Thatcher's popularity back home, and almost certainly had some impact on her re-election. Although, maybe don't overstate it. There was a resurgence of pride after years of miserable decline. And practically, we put a permanent garrison on the Falklands. And Falklands has been a huge drain on the UK ever since. It was less likely now for Britain to hand over Gibraltar, which was mainly Brits living there. But Hong Kong was negotiated, mainly Chinese living there. Um, and it was going to be given back to the Chinese. So it was, in foreign policy terms, this a standalone event? Pretty much. What did others think about the crisis? Well, it meant that there was an approval rating for Thatcher of over 50% because of her bold leadership and this idea of the empire striking back. But some others thought it was too triumphalist and jingoistic. For example, when Thatcher said, rejoice, rejoice. The Sun gave lavish approval. Thatcher was almost ch Chilean. And even most of the Labour Party supported the war, although a lot of them wanted us to go through UN channels first, which we did, but then also carry on a little bit harder at trying to get a negotiated settlement. Michael Lynch says, it gave Thatcher an opportunity to reveal a facet of her character that would otherwise have been re remained hidden. He says Thatcher was an outstanding war leader. Ma says Thatcher was lucky and that she had no choice to go to war after her original or her government's original errors. Ma also says it seems perverse to deny that the Falklands was crucial in the 1983 elections. Patrick Walsh Atkins says she may well have won the election in 1983 without the Falklands victory but with military defeat in the Falklands it could well have ended her career. The military thought she was marvellous. Thatcher herself said she was damned if we had a war and damned if we didn't. And she also said we have ceased to be a nation in retreat. The Franks report into the war said the invasion could not have been foreseen, the Argentinian one that is, and it exonerates the government, but it gently condemned the British government for incompetence in withdrawing the HMS endurance. Ian Gilmore and Peter Jenkins said that Thatcher failed to prevent the invasion in the first place. And Tony Benn said that Thatcher did not take USA and Chile's attempts to bring about a peaceful settlement seriously. Selden and Collings said diplomacy was used by both sides to shore up international support rather than actually reach an accommodation. John O'Farrell, the left-wing journalist, says gotcha headline in the sun was an insensitive way to report 400 deaths on the sinking of the Belgrano. The South American writer Georges-Louis Borges says that it was pretty much insignificant and his quote it reminds me of two bald men fighting over a comb explains this very eloquently if a little insultingly to bald men anyway finally Dennis Healy accused her Thatcher of glorying in slaughter and it was well noted that when the men came back from the Falklands steadily staged so they would come in over a long time and keep the popular patriotic feeling going that Thatcher neglected to invite the Queen to the celebrations. That's it for the Falklands. I'll see you next time for something different. Bye bye.